Even though February is almost over already, we are here to talk about my knit year's resolutions. I don't care that it's February. I made these resolutions at the beginning of January and I've been thinking about them and holding on to them and definitely abiding by the things that it's important to me to work on, but I just haven't had a chance to sit down and talk to you about them. So I thought we would do it now. <laughs> Before I jump into my ideas for how to improve my knitting for this year, I'm going to talk about the resolutions that I made last year. I sat down and rewatched the video that I filmed last year about my knit year's resolutions, and I have some thoughts. Firstly, I want to touch on each of the three resolutions that I made last year and comment on my success or lack thereof in each of those endeavors. So my first last year was to improve my stash maintenance, which I listened to my whole explanation of it. And I honestly kind of don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> I'm sure it made sense to me at the time, but now I'm like, none of those things are problems. So maybe it was successful. My evaluation of this one is it was probably successful because I don't think it's an issue anymore but I also don't know that I've actually changed all that much since that time. When I was discussing the resolution in last year's video, I definitely talked a lot about my Ravelry stash and keeping track of stuff and overall trying to keep the size of my stash relatively the same from the beginning of the year to the end. I didn't look at that data specifically, but I don't think that was the case. I did a lot of yarn shopping last year. Not to say I didn't do a lot of knitting last year, but I also did bring in a lot. So I don't know how successful that one was, but I'm gonna err on the side of more successful rather than less because I don't consider it to be a problem anymore. My second resolution last year was to make more basics. Um, I think a part of me interpreted that more as make more neutrals because I did actually manage to make a lot of neutrals, but I think I really did stick to this one. This one was probably my most successful resolution last year. I made much more of an effort to choose more wearable colors to choose more neutral colors. I made a lot of gray and beige last year and that was fun and I don't have an issue with it, but I think in retrospect, I have a better understanding of what I meant. I was choosing very colorful, very variegated yarns at yarn shows and yarn stores because I think that they're fun to look at and they're so beautiful, but I find them difficult to wear once they're actually knit up. So I think a better resolution for last year would have been choose more solids. Maybe instead of more basics or neutrals, I meant more solids and tonals because I do love color and I do wear colorful sweaters. I just don't wear very multicolored sweaters or like variegated sweaters. I tend to stick to solids. I like sweaters like this that have like a texture or a pattern to them and that just doesn't show in variegated yarns. So I guess really the issue that was probably happening was a disconnect between the type of patterns that I like and the type of yarn that I was buying. So I think over the course of the year as I kind of tried to stick to that and make more basics, I think it did level out and I, I do think it was a very successful endeavor as far as that. I've made all of these things that I consider to be much more basic than the things that I was making previously and or neutral. And I've added a lot more staples to my wardrobe that I'm really glad that I did. So going forward, I'm just gonna keep in mind that when an independent yarn dyer launches a pre-order for their new collection, even though that variegated that has little dabbles of the entire collection in it and has gorgeous speckles is so, so beautiful, it would probably behoove me to just pick one of the other beautiful tonals that's a little less flashy because ultimately that's the sweater that I'll wanna wear. The third resolution that I made last year, which has unequivocally failed, was to keep my project journal. So I didn't not work on it at all last year. In fact, I spent a long time last February and then a little more time in the summer trying to work through this mess of ball bands and photos and swatches and little things that I had saved to add to my yarn journal. And ultimately, I believe that the problem was I'm too behind on it. I'm getting into my own head. There's too much of a backlog of stuff that I would have to work through to catch up. And that was overwhelming to the point where I just never did it. I spent a long time sorting and matching up ball bands with samples and then pulling the finished garments out of 
my wardrobe or out of storage or wherever they were and trying them on and my, my husband helped me he took photos of me wearing them with the instant camera so that i can add those to the journal as well and we were matching those and my whole dining room table was covered with these little piles of different projects and i had no idea what order they went in a lot of them were from before I started carefully tracking my projects through Ravelry, so I didn't even know what order they would go. I can't even look it up. It was overwhelming to say the least. And I never did it. I would get bursts of energy and spend a week or a couple days sorting through it all and trying to figure out where to start and never quite finding a piece manageable enough to get started, and I just never did. So, this is going to bring me into my actual knit years resolutions. Before I jump into my kind of the same but quite different resolutions for this year, I hope you're enjoying this video. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad you found the channel and I hope that you find the time to subscribe and check back in the future for our other content coming up. My first knit years resolution for 2024 is going to be to actually keep a project journal. <laughs> The same resolution as last year, but this year I'm adding a caveat, and that is I'm starting fresh. I'm starting with the projects that I finish in 2024. It doesn't matter to me that I rolled over a bunch of whips from last year or the year before, and I've got all sorts of timelines crisscrossing that are hard to keep track of. I'm going to make a project journal on my terms. I'm going to decide that it gets added the date it gets cast off or finished. That said, I have a clean slate and I have a couple projects that are ready to add to a journal. I bought a new journal so that I can start fresh and lower my own expectations so that it's a much more manageable task. I haven't started actually journaling yet, but I did purchase a new journal, set aside the things in order that I've finished in 2024 so that it will be an easier project when it's time to sit down and start making that journal. And in all likelihood, I will be making a video about that. My second resolution for this year is not directly about my knitting. It's actually about my content right here on the channel. So I am trying to hold myself to a bit of an upload schedule. I'm not going to go overboard. I'm not going to like go crazy and be too harsh trying to stick to a very strict schedule. However, in the past, I've been very loosey goosey and had no schedule at all kind of piled up things. And when I thought I had enough stuff to talk about, I would film a podcast. If there was a topic that I thought was interesting, if there was somewhere I was going that was yarn related, I would make a video about it. I have so many ideas for creative endeavors that I plan to make videos about. And it's getting to the point where they're building up, not just on a list of video ideas, but also in my home, there are things that are backed up that are waiting for me to kind of process it and film a video about it before it can get tidied up and put away or for whatever reason, I'm overwhelmed at the idea of doing all of these larger ideas and they're not getting done. So in order to help myself make a more manageable content schedule, I'm making an actual schedule. I'm planning ahead when I'm going to film things and I'm going to try to stick to it. Again, it's not hard and fast. It's not strict. Who knows what'll happen? But resolutions are about trying new things to kind of improve your situation. And right now, I think there's a lot of things that I would love to get done and that I would love to share with you guys, but it's a little overwhelming when I don't have anywhere to start. So taking the time to sit down, plan out when I'm going to do what and when I know I'm going to need to film it, I think that's going to help me roll things out more regularly and get to a lot of things that I really want to get done for my own sake and then hopefully be able to share it with everybody online. My third net year's resolution for this year is not for the whole year, it's for the first six months. I am on a bit of a yarn ban. <laughs> I'm not doing a strict one again. I know myself well enough to know that if I try to do an all or nothing sort of challenge situation, I'm gonna fail. So I'm not purchasing yarn for the first half of 2024 because I did a lot of shopping at Rhinebeck. I did a lot of shopping during the summer and throughout last year, and my yarn stash is beyond capacity. I do wanna work through it, but also I'm getting to the point where I have tons of yarn that I love, tons of sweater quantities that I know I wanna use, and not putting a stopper on the yarn coming in is really making it difficult for me to work through what I have and get to 
those yarns that I know that I'm going to love to work with when I can make the time for it. So I'm putting a ban on to allow myself to work through stash for six months. So my timeline is generally six months. It's not exactly six months. My original idea was to not purchase yarn with some caveats that I'll get to until I go on my first vacation this year, which is going to be at the end of June. So I know I'm going to go to yarn stores on that trip. I'm absolutely not going to tell myself I can't buy yarn on that trip. So that was kind of my goal. And then a couple of weeks later, I realized that actually the Central New York Fiber Festival is a couple of weeks before that trip. So maybe I should be a little more lenient and let myself buy yarn at that festival. So we'll see what happens. I actually haven't purchased any yarn since Vlogmas. There was a couple purchases I made during the month of Vlogmas and I kind of don't remember what order they were in, but I haven't bought anything since I chronicled it there for you. Going forward, I'm not planning on buying any until June with a couple exceptions. Um, one exception being if I want specific yarn to make a specific gift for someone because my sister's expecting a child and I'm making my future nephew a bunch of projects, I would like the flexibility to maybe buy yarn for something particular if I don't have what I need. So far I've have, had everything in stash that I needed to make for him, which is really fun and uh, sustainable for everybody. So I'm, I'm happy to be able to work from stash to make him a bunch of gifts. But if there's something I want to purchase to make a gift for a particular person, I'm gonna let myself do that. The second exception is I have a bunch of gift cards to my local yarn store, Nitty Gritty Yarns. Uh, and I've since I have some funds that are already on gift cards, I don't, I don't think that would count. If I decide I want to purchase something, I'm going to save it until uh, that, that need becomes overwhelming. And then I'll go to Nitty Gritty and use my gift cards for that. And I don't think that that should count. And then the third caveat is if a project that is already in progress needs one more skein or another couple skeins to be able to wrap up. I'm going to buy more to be able to finish a project that's already in the works so that I can get it off the needles. So, but other than those, which I think are very reasonable exceptions, I'm not buying yarn until the middle of the year. I do have a bunch of sweater quantities that I'm excited about that I'm eager to get to. So I'm working through them one at a time. And I'm also very proud of myself for already casting on things that have been languishing in stash for a while because maybe they're not the most exciting yarn that I have, but they're absolutely a finished product that I am dying to be able to wear. So definitely more of a product than a process knit on those. And I'm glad that this little yarn band has already pushed me to kind of dig into that and work through things that I'm less excited about the process for. Maybe this last one doesn't count as a resolution because it's more of just a big project undertaking. But since we're here talking about plans, I want to throw it in anyway because I'm excited about it and I think you will be too. I am planning on redoing my craft room again. Not entirely, it's not an overhaul. I still like a lot of things about it. I don't want to change the aesthetic because maximalist plant grandma chic is always going to be my thing. A lot of things about the way the room was set up in the first place don't work for me. A lot of things that I brought up in my Knit Year's Resolutions video last year, like the organization of the closet and some parts of the yarn stash are really not working and they're creating problems. And it's gotten to the point where I can't use my craft room. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've filmed like the last three months worth of videos downstairs in my entryway because the light here is good and my craft room isn't usable right now because of the way I set it up. I'm planning to do a whole series of videos about this, not just one big video like I did last time. So look out for these coming up. The first one I'm going to start with is everything that's wrong with it and why I think I need to do it in the first place so we can start spitballing ideas together for how to get going. That's a resolution too, right? Like that's a big undertaking that I'm planning on doing. To summarize, my knit year's resolutions for this year are to actually keep my knitting journal this year, to keep a video upload schedule that is manageable, but pushes me to actually create content that I like making and that you like watching, to not buy yarn until specified dates this June, and to redo my craft room in a way that makes it usable to help encourage my other resolutions, right? It's going to be easier for me to maintain my stash and to make great videos and to do everything else when my craft room is in a beautiful, usable state that I love. So I hope that you hated my advice mid-video and deigned to click the subscribe button. 
I will be very happy if I see you back here for the next one because I have so much hope for all the stuff that we're going to get done together on this channel in 2024. Can't wait to see you then. Bye.